Hi, everybody. I'm Aurora Dreger from the Educating All Learners Alliance, and welcome to this webinar, Mind-Body Practices to Cultivate Well-Being in the Classroom for Everyone, hosted by ELA and Zensational Kids. We are a coalition of organizations dedicated to producing and sharing resources, programs, and events, just like this, dedicated to supporting students with differences. And joining us today as our guest is Allison Morgan of Zensational Kids. Zensational Kids is an organization committed to activating to the fullest potential of everyone in the learning community. Allison's going to walk us through some of her great practices and also some of the theory and research that went into developing these practices. So you'll learn the science of activating an inner state of a calm, alertness, and well-being, how to do this for yourself and for your students. If you like what you saw today, please make sure to follow us on Twitter at educatingall underscore org. You can also visit us at educatingalllearners.org. And with that, I pass it over to Allison Morgan to kick off today's presentation. Thank you, Aurora. I am so thrilled to share this with educators all over because I think that it is such an important um, thing that is needed now for ourselves as educators, as well as just in the classroom to help with growth and development in every area. Um, if you're not familiar with me or Sensational Kids, I'll tell you just a little bit um, about me. Um, I am an occupational therapist. I've been working with schools for over 30 years. Um, as an OT, I typically would see the kids that were struggling the most in classrooms. And about 15 years ago, I discovered mind-body practices for myself. They were steeped in... Um, yoga, in meditation, in mindfulness, and practices like Qigong and Tai Chi. And um, I immediately felt a quick change within my own body, within my own well-being, that I felt was a missing piece of what our kids especially needed. And if you think back 15 years ago, maybe some of you are new educators, but when you just think about how the well-being of our students or of yourself and ask, you know, what really is the quality there right now? And I'm sure everybody could say there's there's a bit of a struggle. Um, so what I have found by applying some of these practices that I've been honing in on and, and um, learning and teaching over the past 15 years, that we are really able to have a profound impact on our own lives and the lives of the children that we serve. So about 10 years ago, I formed this company, Sensational Kids, and I went from being a traditional OT to, I guess you could say an entrepreneur, some would say a pioneer, because I started bringing in these tools, these um, simple practices to help everybody shift into states of well-being. And when you hear the word well-being, you know, you might think of words like you feel calm, you you feel peaceful, you feel connected to the people around you, you feel at ease. And it just happens to be that when we experience those inner states, we're really functioning to the best of our ability. And when we're feeling stressed and overwhelmed and frustrated and defeated, it's really hard to function to the best of our ability. And there isn't a lot of will well-being there. So the focus of Sensational Kids has been to teach tools that specifically help calm the mind and the body, manage the emotions, and we've all been feeling some pretty big emotions the past couple of years, um, focus attention. It's something else that, you know, with all of this technology and all of this social media, where we've been training the mind to be more distracted than we are teaching the mind of how to hone our attention. And the other piece is um, about cultivating compassion. So compassion within ourselves, compassion within our interactions, compassion within our communication with others. Um, and everything that we teach is evidence-based as an OT. I, I, 
really focus on what has the evidence, what has the research shown us so that we know that what we're doing is having a positive impact and a positive outcome for ourselves and our students. Um, so just know that everything that I share with you today, it is evidence-based. Now, when I started 15 years ago and started doing some of these things, I knew for myself that these are practices that helped me myself feel clearer, calmer, uh, more compassion for myself. Um, so was doing, feeling much better. Um, however, there wasn't as much science out there as there is now. So I'm, I'm really happy to be able to share that with all of you. So let's just think about well-being. What, what is well-being? It's the combination of feeling safe that is a felt sense, not just knowing that the building that I'm in is safe and guarded, but having that sense of safety within my own mind and body, feeling connected. You could also say feeling as if I belong where I am and just functioning well. So all of this really is about our physical sense, mental, emotional, and physiological. And it sort of makes sense when you just think like when we feel good, we do good, right? But feeling good is not just a state of the mind. It's not just think a lot of positive thoughts and everything's going to be okay. It's a state of the mind and it's a state of the body feeling good. And what well-being requires is actually communication between the mind and the body. And when we're talking about the mind and the body, we are talking about the nervous system. So what is this nervous system? So we're going to be talking about the autonomic nervous system. So the autonomic nervous system, it controls things within our body automatically. And we have these two branches. One is the sympathetic nervous system, the other, the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, the sympathetic nervous system is sometimes called our stress response. If you think about like driving a car, it would be the part of our nervous system that puts the foot on the gas pedal so that we go, 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 go. No matter what's in front of us, we're just gonna go. It revs us up. It prepares us to fight if there's danger, take flight or to freeze. So it's this part of our nervous system that ma makes our heart beat faster. It'll make our breath like quick and shallow. Our gut becomes inactive because all of our energy is sent to our muscles, our big muscles, so that we can use them to fight or to run away. So we have this automatic branch, like when we're in danger, we don't have to cognitively think about what to do. Our body is going to react automatically. Now we have the other side of that autonomic nervous system, which is called the parasympathetic nervous system. This is where relaxation and peace live. So remember that example of the car? This would be like putting your foot on the brake calming yourself down, preparing yourself to rest. This is where you're able to think clearly, restore your muscles, restore your energy. This is where our heartbeat will begin to slow. It becomes more rhythmic. We have bigger, fuller breaths. Our gut is active. We have better blood flow throughout our body better balance of all the hormones. This is where well-being lives in this relaxation mode. Now, unfortunately, for many of us, we are sympathetic nervous system driven. We live on this branch of our autonomic nervous system way more than the relaxation branch. And unfortunately, what happens is your body is constantly in this flow of adrenaline and cortisol. And um, we try to multitask things and take care and control a million things. And unfortunately, it throws our balance off so much that this is where sickness and disease tend to, um, tend to live and tend to breed.
So what I want to bring you today are some tools where we can turn on that parasympathetic nervous system, because here's the beautiful thing. We actually have technology within our nervous system, connecting our mind and body that allows us to influence and shift our inner state. So what we're going to be doing today is giving you some tools to turn on that parasympathetic nervous system so that we can balance out these two branches. Because again, that's where our health and vitality is going to live. Now, let's just bring this into the classroom. What does this look like in the classroom? Well, you may not be familiar with talking about uh, the nervous system and um, these, two, these two branches of the autonomic nervous system. But many educators are familiar with the term regulation, self-regulation. And we know what that looks like. Those are the kids that are able to meet the needs set before them. They're able to pay attention. They're able to um, be calm and engage in the classroom. And we're also familiar with the word dysregulation. This is when kids are totally overwhelmed, totally stressed. They've got fog brain. Maybe they're even shutting down. So you could look at all of these pictures here and you can recognize which are the pictures of the kids that are probably regulated and which are dysregulated. So this is another way of thinking about which kids are, have this balance of sympathetic and nervous system, uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, and which kids are really running in that stress response, okay, regulation and dysregulation. And you see what that looks like in the classroom. You've seen kids head on the desk right? You've seen kids ripping up their paper because I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Or kids just scared or frightened or anxious. So what I'd like to start um, planting the seed for you is of not thinking about their behavior um, just as the behavior itself, but let's take a little step deeper and thinking of it as a nervous system state. And the same is true for you. Think about yourself, the days where you're re well regulated or your nervous system is balanced. You're feeling happy. You're, you're um, able to you know, meet the challenges of the day without feeling overly stressed. You have more smiles on your face. You feel yourself taking deep breaths. You feel like your day is going smoothly. Um, and then there's other days where like, Everything could piss you off. You're just on edge. Maybe you didn't sleep well. Um, maybe you're worried about something. So starting to think of these things in terms of your nervous system. What state is your nervous system in? And when we start to take this approach of looking beneath the behavior, not for the action of what we're seeing externally, but we start to ask about what's causing that behavior, it's going to start to change how we address behavior. So it's very common in most schools right now that we address behavior based on the actual behavior that we're seeing. We're using behavior charts and punishment and reward and prizes, and we're calling kids out so that we catch them in the moment and we want them to switch how, how they're behaving because this might not be allowed here. But what I want to make very, very clear is that all the behaviors that we're seeing are rooted in something deep. We're just seeing the manifestation of what's deeper. So, for example, when kids are feeling stressed out and overwhelmed, or when you are feeling frustrated and overwhelmed, it's going to show in your behavior. It's really, really hard to hide it. But unless we address that nervous system state, we are not going to be able to teach kids through checklists and prizes how to shift their behavior. We need to start working from the bottom up. And the same is for us. Oops, sorry about that. The same is for us. 
in order for us to be able to manage ourselves and manage all of our responsibilities from a state of well-being, because we deserve to be well, to feel well, we are going to have to address this from that felt internal state of balancing our body and mind through the nervous system to create this this sense of well-being within us. And it's really important more now than ever, because probably for the first time in all of our living history, we have been um, affected by this collective trauma, collective trauma from COVID. And, you know, it's easy to just say, brush it off. It's done. It's over. We're back in the classroom. Things are back to normal. But what we need to understand about trauma is that it's not the event of something that happened to you. So it wasn't just because everything was shut down. We were isolated. We had to figure things out quickly and pivot and do all that. It's not just that event. It's that it's the effect that that event had on our mind and body. It's how our mind and body process that and perceive that and is continuing to do so. Trauma, or you could say COVID, was an event that did shatter our sense of safety for a significant amount of time. And when things are uncertain, our our, our um, neurology and our physiology for human beings, we, we don't like that. <laughs> We don't. It really does push us off center and it creates a physiological change within us. And unless it's addressed, it lasts. It lasts. Our bodies hold on to all the trauma we have had throughout our lifetime. And if we don't address it through our own physiology, it will keep wreaking havoc on us. It'll be hard to have well-being. So before we go on, let's just do a little, a quick check-in just to see if we can even recognize, you know, what is my nervous system state right now? Because I don't even really know what that means, perhaps. So we're going to do this little investigating. I'm going to guide you through this. And if it seems like odd or obscure, don't worry about it. Just, just be with it. We're just going to be here for a few minutes, but this is sort of like the first step in just diving in and asking your mind and body what's going on. All right. Um, so to do this, we're going to be closing our eyes. So come to a comfortable seat and place your feet on the floor. And let your back rest against your chair and gently close your eyes. You could keep your hands on your lap. You could also put your hands on your heart, just like in this picture. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to check in with ourselves. Like just imagine right now you are the center of the universe. Nothing else matters right now in this moment. And we just want to check in with the state of affairs of this wonderful human body that we have. So let's just bring our attention to our mind. Notice, you know, are, are there thoughts just swirling in there? And we don't wanna judge them, we just wanna notice. What are the thoughts that my mind feeds me or is feeding me right now? And then bring your attention to your body. Why don't you start at your feet? Notice your feet. How do they feel against the floor? Maybe you have shoes. How do your feet feel in your shoes? And then notice your legs. You might notice your bottom against the seat cushion. And then notice your trunk. Maybe you even elongate your spine just a little bit. 
Do you notice your weight on your hips? Do you have more weight on one side than the other? Notice your shoulders. Are those muscles tight? Does it feel like your shoulders are reaching towards your ears? Or can you relax your shoulders just a little bit? And bring your attention to your arms, all the way down to your fingers. Maybe you noticed your arms feel heavy or light. Then notice your neck and your face. How do the muscles of your face feel right now? And then the top of your head. And next, bring your attention to your breath. Beautiful thing about our breath is that we don't have to think about it. It just happens naturally, right? That's part of our autonomic nervous system. It just breathes on its own. The other fascinating thing is that we can manipulate our breath to change how we feel. So just notice your breath going in and out. Try not to hold. Notice if there's any restriction or perhaps it's easeful. And then what about the emotions? What you're feeling right now? Any words pop up? Maybe there's emotions that you felt before this webinar, but now different words are popping up. Just notice. And then how is your overall energy right now? Maybe you're feeling tired. Maybe as you're relaxing a little bit, you're feeling more tired. Maybe you're energized because you're curious. Just notice. And then take a deep breath in through your nose and a slow breath out. And then when you're ready, just flutter your eyes open. So this five point check-in, and I like to say check-in before you check out, is a really nice thing to give to yourself as a way of just showing yourself some compassion because these things really matter. Your mind, your thoughts, your body, how it feels, your breath, how it's flowing, the emotions, what you're feeling and your overall energy. Like this is you, this is your life. They're, these are very important things to notice. And these are things that we can help improve the functioning of all of these things. So giving yourself the opportunity, maybe first thing in the morning, just to sit for five minutes and just do this five point check in for yourself. And again, it's not about changing anything. It's just about giving yourself the attention that you deserve to notice. And whenever we talk about, oh, shifting this or making this better or, you know, feeling better. You need to know what your starting point is, right? How can you improve on anything when you don't know where you're starting? Okay, so this is a really powerful but simple practice. And if you'd like some more guidance on that, uh, on our website, Sensational Kids, we have a free resource page. Um, so you can get more information on that. You can just download it for yourself um, to, to help you out some more. Um, the other thing that I love about these practices, and it's about this quote by Viktor Frankl, you know, when we're no longer able to change a situation, we're challenged to change ourselves. It's about controlling the controllables. You know, we'd love a lot of things to change in education, but a lot of those things that we want to change are going to require other people to do things. And we have no control over those other people. But if we can at least change ourselves from the inside out for our own benefit, like, and we could just say that so that we can feel better. It's amazing what starts to happen on 
the external, when we do that for ourselves. So what we're really activating here um, through this nervous system that we're that we're working on and we're bringing balance to is our vagus nerve because this this vagus nerve is our 10th cranial nerve. It goes from the base of our skull and it goes all the way down. It goes into our face, down our neck and innervates everything in our, our abdomen, all of our organs. So this nerve it's part, it's the biggest part of the parasympathetic nervous system. And what it does is it sends messages from the body to the brain. So we can use the information from our body to help our brain to bring more um, relief to our brain, to our mind, to help us open up and access the parts of our brain that help with learning that help with communication and um, and interaction that help us do all the things that we want to be able to do in an educational environment. We're very used to in school thinking about we're strengthening the mind, the mind, we're growing the mind. The reality is this what the science tells us is that you cannot have a healthy mind without a healthy body. And the body is influencing the mind way more than the mind is influencing the body. So today is about how do I get to that vagus nerve? How do I activate that vagus nerve in a way that sends these calming messages to my mind? Another thing that that we need to um, realize, and this is really going to make sense when you think about behavior in the classroom and the power of using our body. Now, while our body is our body is sending messages to the brain and the brain does send messages to the body, but the body sends 80 percent more information to the brain about how the body is feeling than the brain sends to the body. The other thing that's happening along with this up and down flow is that our bodies are continually monitoring the, the bodies of other people and the environment, the external environment. Our bodies have these, you could think of it like a um, receiving tower. Our body is constantly taking in information. It's at an unconscious level about the external environment and about the other nervous systems in the environment. And it's asking this big question, am I safe? Am I safe? And again, it's not a cognitive process. It's a feeling process. It's an unconscious process. So the body is taking in all of this information. And at the same time, the body, our nervous system, is sending out information about what our felt sense is, about the balance of our nervous system. So think about this in a classroom. When you have all of these nervous systems sending out information and taking in information. It's easy to see how when there's a lot of stress in the classroom and the lot of stress can be from a very, very, very stressed nervous system, how it gets picked up and it gets it becomes contagious. And I'm sure you've heard that emotions are contagious. This is one of the reasons why, because the other bodies pick up those signals. So the way that I like to think about this for myself and the way that I like to think about this in terms of helping convince schools that the well-being and the nervous system state of educators is essential in a classroom is because you're the dominant nervous system. You are the dominant tower of information in your classroom. And if you are able to maintain, let's say, a regulated state or balance between your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, 
you are unconsciously being able to create a safer container for all of your students. So if they are receiving a safe felt sense and that's what they are feeling, you're going to see a big change in behavior without having to say anything. It's about your own presence. So educator well-being to me is essential in every classroom. So when the body and the brain receive information that reflects safety, about feeling calm, about being connected and belonging, that's when our nervous system is able to shift into regulation. Our ability to self-regulate greatly improves and our overall well-being improves as well. The other reason why this is so important is because when that parasympathetic nervous system, when that vagus nerve is sending up signals of like, oh my God, I don't feel, I don't feel safe. I'm actually anxious right now. I'm stressed. I'm overwhelmed. I'm frustrated. I'm scared. That blue part, that midbrain, that emotional brain, there's a structure in there called the amygdala. It's sort of like our threat detector. It detects a threat. And its primary function is to make sure you stay safe and you stay alive. So what that's going to do is it's going to create this neural circuit to the stress brain. Because if your survival is required right now and there's a threat, I'm only going to be able to fight, take flight, or freeze. Those are automatic responses based on survival of our brain. Our system does it automatically. There's no thought involved. Now, when that stress brain is activated, that's our primitive brain, that's the back brain, that front brain, the yellow part, that thinking brain, that prefrontal cortex, it turns off. So there's no learning happening. There's no, oh, let me take in that wonderful lesson that my teacher just taught me and let me see how I could solve the problems on the board and I can answer that question. None of that's happening because the part of the brain that is able to process all of that is actually offline, okay? And it all started from that felt sense, that message from the body up to the brain. Now, when that amygdala, again, that threat detector is getting information of like, oh, I feel safe. I feel calm. I feel connected to the people here. I, I'm, I'm okay right now. There's a new neural circuit that, that ignites and that's to turn on that thinking brain, that free, that, that prefrontal cortex. Okay, and right here is where our executive functions lie. This is where we are able to regulate ourselves, organize, reason, respond, all those words there in yellow. Okay, but it begins with creating that felt sense of safety, of calm, of peace, of connection. Okay, that balance in the nervous system. So let's, let's, join together and let me share some practices that you can use for you. And the beautiful thing about this is you can even share with your, with your students um, because the things that I'm going to share with you right now are different ways to use your breath, to use your body, to activate that vagus nerve, to stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system and bring your body and mind into balance. Um, and everybody in your classroom, everybody in your home has a nervous system. So all of these things are applicable to anybody with a nervous system. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're actually going to go to the bottom one where it says alternative two quick breaths in and one long exhale. Um, because sometimes this is this is a very quick thing that you can do, even like while you're walking or you're getting out of your car and you're walking towards the the door to your building and you could already start to feel yourself getting anxious because of the day that you're about to have or you're predicting you're going to have. This is something that you can do. And it looks like this. It's two quick breaths through the nose, one long exhale through the mouth. 
So let's just do a few of those together, okay? So breathe in and out, and in and out, and in and out, and in and out. Okay, and then just come to a natural breath. And maybe you immediately feel something shift. Again, we've only did like three or four of those, but imagine if you just did 10. And we're going to kind of, you know, run through these because I want to give you as many as we can. And what I encourage you to do is come back to this webinar and do them again and do them slowly. Um, I'm also going to encourage you to go on our website and download the free resources that we have for you. And I'm going to encourage you to try some of these things with your with your students. Um, we even have free resources for you and what you can share with your students. And on our website, we even have you know programs if your school is interested in investing in bringing these in a bigger way into your classroom. We have um, methods for doing that as well. Okay, so next is triangle breath. I mean, rectangle breath. And the idea here is that we're going to exhale for longer than the inhale. So we're going to start on the side here. We're going to breathe in for a count of three. So you could watch me first. Out for five. In for three. Out for five. Okay, maybe you'd like to join me now. In for three, out for five, in for three, out for five. One more time, in for three, out for five, in for three, out for five. And again, just come to our your natural breath of whatever that is for you and notice how that feels. You might start to begin to notice a shift just in your breathing from doing these um, quick things. All right. The next one is I like to call this cup of tea breathing. What we're going to do is we're going to place our hand on our heart and our belly. And we're going to imagine that our trunk here is just a big teacup. And we're going to sip in breath through our nose, but we're going to fill the cup from the bottom up to the top. And maybe you even want to imagine that it's warm. You're filling yourself up with this air that's warm from the bottom all the way up. And then as you breathe out, you're going to try to empty from the top down. Okay. And we're going to repeat that a few times. So let your feet come to the floor and gently close your eyes. And maybe your first few breaths, you're just letting your breath land in your body wherever it naturally does. So you might even notice that as you are breathing and what's your comfortable breath right now, that maybe only one hand is moving or maybe both. So just notice what your breath feels like on the inside and the outside with your hands for a moment. All right, and then we're going to use this visualization of filling up a warm cup of tea by breathing in, sipping in air through your nose and filling the bottom of that cup so your belly is going to swell. And then you're going to fill, fill, fill until you start to feel your heart lift a little bit. And then when you exhale, your heart's going to relax and your belly is going to pull in towards your spine. Okay, we'll try that again. Breathing in through the nose, filling that cup of tea from the bottom all the way to the top. And then exhale. Letting the heart relax and the belly draw in towards the spine, emptying that cup. All right, and then just take whatever a comfortable breath in is for you. Breathing in and breathing out. 
And then opening your eyes. So this is another practice that this could just be your only practice. You set your, your timer on for two minutes and all you do is practice having a cup of tea. That's it. And that will activate your parasympathetic nervous system. It will activate that vagus nerve and it will bring a sense of calm into your body. Okay, next is waterfall. You can do this standing or you can do it seated. I'm actually going to stand up, but you do what's comfortable for you. So we're going to stand, we're going to along, whether you're standing or sitting, you're going to along your spine and lift your arms all the way up to the ceiling. So you're stretching your whole spine, your abdomen, you're lifting your rib cage, you're lifting your arms with a big breath in. And then you're going to exhale forward, just like a waterfall. Imagine water rushing down towards the bottom of the waterfall and wherever your hands land and your head lands or just shifts downward, whatever's comfortable for you. And then a big breath in again as you lift. And a big breath out as you fold forward. A big breath in as you lift. And a big breath out as you fold. One more time. Big breath in. Big breath out. If it's comfortable for you, you can stay here. Let your head, neck, shoulders, arms dangle. Just allow there to be a nice release in your spine here. You take a few breaths in and out. Notice how your rib cage and your spine elongate with the inhale and exhale. Let everything just relax. And when you're ready, on your inhale, slowly come up to either sitting or standing. And maybe here, just take a moment, come to your chair if you were standing and close your eyes for a moment and just notice how you feel. Notice how your body feels. And maybe you notice a little bit of relief. Maybe you notice fuller breath. Whatever you notice, it's about noticing, okay, right? Giving your body that attention. All right, the next practice is just, just like a dog. You know, there's, a, there's this um, book by Dr. Robert Saplowski, Why Giraffes, Why Zebras Don't Have Stress. It's because after a stressful interaction, they actually shake, they shake and it resets the nervous system, okay? When we have a stressful situation, we just keep tightening up and carrying it around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to standing and we're just gonna give our body a little shake, a little bounce of the knees. So we're gonna shake in a way that's comfortable for us. And if you can really put a little um, rigor into it, okay, a little momentum into it, you might feel a bigger release. And you really want to try to shake all parts of your body. Now, I'll do this in classrooms of kids, and it looks super, super silly. And sometimes everybody's laughing, sometimes they just think it's ridiculous. But if you can get everybody to shake and you do it yourself. It's such a beautiful release of that bent, pent up energy that we have from those big challenging emotions. So you could think of this as like an energetic release of those emotions. Okay, so I'm just going to count to 10. So really shake for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. And then we're going to take a big breath in, reach arms all the way up, 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 up. Bring our arms down on the exhale. And then just take a moment to notice 
how you feel. Notice if there's any different sensations there now. Like I feel my hands tingling right now. But at the same time, my arms feel lighter. So again, I'm just investigating my inner, the inner state, the inner state of sensations and emotions of how I am feeling. All right, the last practice that we're going to do together today, it's called Healing Hands. And this is adapted from um, Dr. Peter Levine's um, trauma holds. So he does a lot of work helping people process trauma. And these are um, some postures of self-holding or self-soothing that he has found very beneficial to people to help process and release the effects of trauma. So you're going to have your feet on the floor and you're just going to rub your hands together to start. And you could see the three different postures that we're going to have our hands in. So the first is going to be holding the front and back of our hand, then our forehead and our heart, and then our heart and our belly. Okay. And you can think of this as really giving yourself some self soothing, some support some compassion and some healing energy through our through our own hands okay um so let's start by just closing our eyes and you're going to bring one hand to your forehead and the other to the back of your skull that bottom ridge of your skull and make sure the whole palm is in contact with your body and you're not really applying a lot of pressure, you're just giving some support. And while we are maintaining our hands in these postures, you're just gonna come to a nice comfortable breath in and out through the nose. So imagine how you would hold a baby's head right, how you would support a baby's head. And you really want to do the same thing just for yourself right now. You're giving yourself the love, the care, the support, and the attention that you deserve. Nobody else has to do that for you. You can do that for you. And then that hand that's in the back of your skull, you're going to bring that hand to your heart. And this is a lovely energetic connection between the mind and the heart. The heart is such a powerful organ. It does so much more than pump our blood. And then you're going to bring the hand from your forehead to your belly. Okay, and we've been here already today, right, for our teacup breath. So notice how that breath wants to flow into your body now. Okay, and before we transition out of this last hold, just ask yourself, like body, mind, how do you feel right now? How do you feel right now in this moment? Okay, and when you're ready, you can release your hands to your lap and open your eyes. So really what we're doing is we're practicing new inner states, right? We're practicing bringing ourselves into calm, into balance, into peace, being more, more open, but in control. And the more we practice 
these inner states, opposed to the other inner states that we've been practicing a lot of being stressed and overwhelmed, but these new inner states become more automatic. We can carry them into not just this moment, but the next moment. Okay, so what we practice moment to moment, we grow, we strengthen, we strengthen that connection between the mind and body so that the body knows how to bring the mind into greater greater states of peace. Okay, this is done neurologically and physiologically. And the more that you practice this, you begin to be that, remember that, that tower, that radio tower that's giving and receiving signals? you begin to be that primary giver of the signal, right? That's like being the thermostat. You set the tone in your classroom. You're constantly sending out those signals of I'm grounded, I'm stable, I'm calm, I'm present. Opposed to how when you're in sympathetic nervous system overdrive, you just become the temperature, right? Whatever everybody else is doing, you sort of like accommodate to that, right? So we want you to be set up to be a strong thermostat, a strong radio tower of regulated signals for your own well-being and for the well-being of all of your students. So I hope that this was really helpful to you. I hope that you listen to this over and over again and you do some of the practices with the webinar or you take advantage of um, things that we have on YouTube and in our resources. So here's a bunch of ways that you can get in touch with me personally if you want to email me or Sensational Kids. And of course, all the resources that Ela has for you. Um, and here's how you can stay in touch with them as well. So thank you. Thank you so much for your time today. And again, I hope that this was helpful to your body and your mind and for all that you do. Alice and Morgan, thank you so much for sharing these practices. I know I'm definitely going to use some of these, especially over the holidays. If you're watching this um, yeah. right around the time that we're that we premiered, it's holiday season. And I know that we all could use a little kind of cool down and reset. Yes, please visit sensationalkids.com to learn more. Please visit educatingalllearners.org for tons of free resources, including there might be some stuff in there soon. That's a, that's a collaboration of another collaboration between Ela and Allison Morgan from Sensational Kids. That's it for us today. Shoot us an email at resources at educatingalllearners.org if you have any questions. And on behalf of the Elaverse, thank you, Allison, for your time, energy, and expertise today. Thanks, Thank everybody. you so much. Have a good day. Bye.